YouTube video I shared in the general team chat like a year ago where there was an out of the box SMS widget in the sales hub. And then Microsoft said nothing about it. It is now in preview. And it's looking to target a release by the end of the month. Um, although there are some limitations I can note that hopefully get fixed by full release, but uh, or modified by full release, but we'll see. Um, OK, so I've got it set up currently in JT demo. Um, so the SMS functionality starts by um, setting up an SMS provider. Um, there are currently only four providers that are available. Um, the one that we've set up with is Telesign. Um, we started with Twilio, but then went over to Telesign. Um, it looks like, however, Twilio might be the better option. So if um, if you're ever talking with, with anyone about setting up, that might be where to start. Um, but you set up your SMS, um, you have a, an API and a key, and then callback URLs for receiving and sending messages. Um, so like we can see right here, got all that set up. Um, and then you can assign phone numbers. So you can have multiple for, uh, per, um, per provider. Um, you just need to set up each individual one. So we're currently setting up, we're in the process of setting up a second provider. Um, currently we just have one. Uh, each phone number can be assigned to either a user or a team. So right now we've got the JT Demo SMS team that, um, that has access to this number, um, but you can also assign it to just one user at a time. Um, let's see. So when it comes to actually messaging, uh, we can go over to sales. Um, this is available on, at the very least, I know uh, leads, opportunities, contacts, and accounts, but I believe it is anything with a phone number. Um, not 100%. Uh, certain on that though. The documentation is kind of limited so far on, on some of the functionality. Um, so we can go in to uh, Aaron Aronson and we've got a couple of different phone number fields. Um, this is where the first kind of caveat of the SMS functionality so far um, comes in, which is that the phone numbers do have to be pretty specifically formatted. Um, they need the country codes in front. Um, if they don't have the country code, they will not send messages. Um, I think there was some documentation somewhere that said it should automatically add them, um, but that is for the provider side. Dynamics needs the country code because it won't even leave Dynamics unless you have that in. So um, we can go to the, if we click the messaging icon here, it will open up the messaging tab on this side. Um, and we can see we've got an already existing contact history, um, you know, with testing and then finally being able to receive information. Um, so we can see our delivery, uh, what number we sent it from, the actual message content, what the responses were. Um, and then we can also see when something isn't sent, we can see a reason why. For here, we can see it's an invalid recipient phone number, which is because I tried it through this phone number here. Um, but there are other ones as well. If you don't have your provider set up, I believe there's a separate error message for that. And then I'm assuming if their number doesn't exist, there's another one. Um, you can change your number down here. So we can see here we have the shared number from Telesign right here for the team. Um, you can also have a personal number assigned just to your individual user, which then will not have that icon. Um, when you're going to message, you can, of course, like type in a random message. Um, but then as well, there are message templates that you can choose from. Um, so we can see gives a little preview. And then as well, this also allows for dynamic content. Um, it's the documentation is weird because there are some that say there are only like 10 things that you can look up, but there's another one that says you can use any OData query. So I'm assuming the OData query is the one that you can do, but I haven't done much configuring with it. Um, so if you want to select a template, you can click select template and then it'll take a second to fill in, but uh, eventually it'll fill in so we can see it filled in the address information. And then I can quickly go send the message and it'll be received on uh, my phone number here, which is listed. Um, we can see that it's sent correctly, and then after a minute, it should change to delivered. Um, up here, you can ch change between a contact and other related records. Um, Aaron Aronson does not have any related records that have a phone number, I believe. Um, but if you want to, you can change between those. I believe that changes the context and what you can pull for your message templates. Um, let me think. Um, there are other. Oh, um, one thing to note, setting up with a provider can take a while. Um, so it's not just as easy as just creating an account and you're good to go. Um, it took us about two weeks to communicate with Telesign to get the proper information going. Um, 
we had to set up like tell them what templates we were using tell them our opt-in process which for us was just we're doing a demo so um that's it um uh, they might want more than that though if you're working with an actual client um and then some other information as well um, it was a say, lot of work just to work with the vendor to yeah. let them be able to use their product it was bizarre and it was the same was, kind of thing mm -hmm. for twilio as well so um mm -hmm. if as we well it's not a conversation for now but as we start you know there's needs for this for customers we need to make sure that we include that that even though the effort if everything we had was good to go like this is a half a day a day of work to get it set up and running and rolling the coordination with providers it takes two to three weeks yep which kind of sucks uh, but we need to make sure we let yeah. customers know mm -hmm. yeah and then setting up a new number requires at least with telesign a resubmission of the entire form um so make sure that when you have your documents ready for the initial sign up make sure you actually save them and keep them on hand um otherwise you have to recreate them don't ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> bit of a pain. Uh, let's see, Smitty, you had a question? Yeah, have you heard anything about integration with field services? So you could, for example, send a text out to a customer that a tech is on the way or anything like that? So, so far, I think all the documentation specifically mentions Sales Hub. Um, I looked at the roadmap and it didn't seem to have anything on field service for the 2023 wave one. Um, but I would assume that they will be rolling out in the future. I, I would imagine that field service would be one of the upcoming ones. Um, it also already exists for marketing and omni-channel. So um, those are also, and they're different systems entirely. So that's another thing to note is that they have, their whole setup is completely different. Sales Hub is its own unique yeah. thing. And you could probably interact because because you, you still have the data and the power automate connectors and things like that. So if like if it was like an update status that the tech is on the way, you could have a power automate that automatically sends out the SMS message. Or better yet, if they have marketing, if that's just a real time transactional email message. Hey, this work order status is updated. Tech is on the way. Send out the email and bada bing, bada boom. So but good questions, Mitty. And that's and that's another aspect is how all this is going to be interacting from an entire A to Z platform perspective. And I think in the future, some of the challenges that we're going to have, right? I just listed out two two things that we could do to solve that problem, right? What are we going to recommend to customers as far as what is the best way to solve it in each of those situations? So that's that's for our, our future.